Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at auto layout, uh, particularly an introduction to auto layout. So if you're not familiar, auto layout is a layout engine provided by Apple uh, for their various platforms to automatically lay out items on the screen based on constraints and rules and have those items be laid out across different devices, different screen sizes. Uh, so you can imagine with iPhones, there are these iPhones with the notch, there are smaller iPhones, bigger iPhones, there's also iPad. So auto layout helps us out uh, with that tremendously. So let's start by creating a new Xcode project. We're going to do a single view app, call it what you'd like. I'm going to call it test for this video, save it where you'd like, and let's expand our Xcode window to give ourselves some more room to work. And let's head over to our storyboard, which is main.storyboard. And we're going to be working in here for the remainder of this video. So, First and foremost, we're just going to drag on a UI view and set a color to it. We're not going to focus on the various elements since this video is uh, kind of around auto layout. So let's come up here and hit this icon to get our library. Let's search for a UI view. Let's plop it on the screen and let's give it a nice bright color. And after doing that, what I want you to do is we want to run this uh, app on two different simulators to see the problem uh, that we currently have and what auto layout will do. So let's come and pick um, any simulator for that matter. We just want to make sure we have two different simulators. So once we run it on here, we'll see that as this storyboard looks, we should see our rectangle like so. Now what I want you to do is go and change this and let's pick like an iPad, something bigger. So let's pick this iPad Pro and let's run it on here and you'll see something a little different you'll see that this rectangle is much smaller and it's up here. And the reason for that is because we haven't supplied any constraints to this rectangle. So it's basically using the sizing of an iPhone and just kind of plopped it where it seemed appropriate from this side, uh, this size uh, perspective. So auto layout allows us to add constraints to give the system rules to lay out our items. So those rules are things like in absolute width and height. It could be relative positioning. For example, if we had another view here, how much space should there be between the top of that second view and the bottom of this blue view? You can also do things like proportion. We want this blue view to be 50% of the width here. It also deals with things like alignment, centering and horizontal, um, horizontal and vertical centering. So with that being said, and me rambling on, let's actually apply constraints and see them in action. So to apply constraints, it's pretty simple. We select what we want to apply a constraint to, and we can use these icons down here, and they're very, very like small, and they don't stand out, and Apple should have probably make them, made them stand out more, but there's a couple things we can do. So once we have our view selected, like so up here, like so, we can come down here and hit this, and we get this panel open up, uh, opened up, and in here we can specify constraints. So these four uh, things that you see here specify, as these arrows and lines kind of exemplify, how much space you want between uh, items in this view. So because there's no other item in relation to this blue view on our screen, this automatically defers to the screen size. So let's say we do something like 20, 20, 20, 20, and then we can hit enter or hit this button to apply constraints. We'll see that our entire view jumps and it looks like we have 20 from each side of the screen. Now it also looks like we have some more space here and here in relation to here. And the reason for that is not because we entered the number wrong, but there's this concept of safe area, which on these devices is the size of the notch up here and the size of this uh, little home bar down here that is present on the iPhones with a notch. And the reason that exists is so we don't overlap that content uh, and things aren't covered under the notch, but that's why this doesn't look as even. But let's actually run this in our iPad, which we still have selected and see what it looks like. Ah, so in our iPad, it's also 20 from the top, 20 from each other side, similar to this. 
Now, why is that? That's because we applied a rule to this view. Regardless of the screen size that you're on, you want this thing to be 20 from each side. You've pinned it to the sides of the screen. Now, if we change this to an iPhone for sake of showing an example, basically what you see here is what you'll get on the iPhone. Cool, like so. Now, let's take a look at some more constraints. So let's say, let's run, stop running this. Um, before we actually look at more constraints, let's actually select it and see how we can get rid of constraints. So once we select this here, in the sidebar, there's this little ruler icon, and this is where all the sizing for this um, item that's selected shows up. And we can see we have our four constraints here, and they're actually called trailing, leading, top, uh, and bottom. Trailing and leading as kind of the picture shows is left and right. Um, so Apple kind of just gave it to it, uh, gave that name to it, but you can take a look at the picture and kind of understand what it means. But uh, what we can do is simply click on a constraint, delete it, delete it, delete it, and delete it. And we see our view didn't actually move, but um, there are no longer constraints on here. So if we run this again on like a big iPad, uh, it might look messed up, and in theory should. Yeah, it does, like so. Because this is showing the iPhone size here, not the iPad size. So it just kind of plopped it in. So let's look at some more constraints. So what if we want to have an explicit width and height, and we want to center this? So we can add an explicit width and height, um, and we can do that by just specifying it. But in that case, we can't specify like left, right, top, and bottom, uh, per se, because those constraints are conflicting at that point. What I mean by that is if we say this is 100 by 100, a square, and then we also say we want this to be 10 from the right, 10 from the left, top and bottom, the, the layout engine is going to basically think, hmm, well you want this to be 100 by 100, but you also want it to be pinned to the side, so which one is it, right? You can't have conflicting constraints. That's a super important principle that is very tough uh, in the beginning because you have to mentally wrap your head around what a constraint is actually doing. So let's click on this blue rectangle again, come down here, click on this, and we see we have width and height in here. We can edit these, and once we do edit them, this checkbox will get checked automatically. Let's do 220 and 220, and we can hit apply, and we'll see our We'll see this change in just a second, our uh, blue rectangle. And the reason it didn't change is because we've given the rectangle width and height, but how does lay auto layout know where on the screen we want to put it? Well, and it, 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 it in fact does not know. So if we come up here, you'll see we have this little red error indicator for this view controller. And if we click it, we'll see that it's telling us that we're missing constraints. This view, it needs a constraint for the X position and the Y position. In other words, it needs to know where to put it on the screen. So auto layout itself is very good at trying to uh, deduce what constraints are missing and or conflicting, and it'll yell at you and tell you with these various errors. So what we said we're going to do is we're going to center this in the larger containing view. And we can do that by coming down here, and instead of selecting this, we're going to select this one. Oh, just kidding, we're going to select this one. And we can do horizontally and vertically in container. If we check this and keep this as is, we're going to see that this view will get smaller and get centered in our containing container. Like so. The errors all disappeared. We can come back here. Now if we run this, and I believe we still have iPad selected up here, we'll see that we have a 200 by 200 square and it's centered. Now, similarly, if we run this on an iPhone, we'll also see we have a 200 by 200 square centered in the middle. Now, notice the size actually didn't change, but in this case, it takes up more space, obviously, because the device is smaller. Um, but that's the purpose of auto layout. The last example we're going to do is we're going to add another view, and we're going to show relative positioning. Uh, in other words, the positioning of one thing to another with constraints. So let's come up here and grab another view. Let's drag it in. Uh, again, we're gonna give it a different background color. We can select this. Let's give it a different color. 
let's go with this one and let's apply some constraints so again let's come down here um, now we're just gonna do this one so we're gonna say this is 20 from the left 20 from the right 0 from the bottom and we want this to be let's say 20 from the blue one the blue rectangle above so how do we know that this 20 specifies from the specifies 20 from the blue one and the way we do that is we hit this drop down and we see that in here we have view safe area and view so we can actually name our elements up here and it helps us in our constraints um, the entire white background is called view but this blue one by default is called view also so let's actually give this a name and we can do that by selecting it the blue square hitting enter on this and typing in a name so we're going to call it blue view hit the red rectangle again come down here to add constraints again and hit this drop down and you'll see there's a blue view in here and it's automatically checked because auto layout is smart enough to understand that's the closest thing uh, so we probably want to have relative spacing to it we'll do 20 20 20 10 and if we hit apply for constraints or add for constraints we'll see that we now have the red uh, rectangle expanded and 20 from the top here so let's again run this on iPhone and iPad to see what they look like. As expected on the iPhone, it basically looks like what we have here. And if we run it on iPad, we'll see that this red square in theory rectangle should be much bigger, which it is. So this red is 20 from each side uh, and it's 20 from the blue square, which is centered and a fixed width and height. So that's kind of auto layout in a nutshell. Um, there's a lot of other constraints you can apply, but these are by far the most common ones to put together an application. The last thing I'll actually mention here, which is kind of cool slash important, is right now we see this as an iPhone with a notch. How do we see this in different devices so we don't have to keep running it to make sure our layout looks good? And the way you can do that, if you haven't noticed down here, is we have this selection option, and we can actually change this in real time to see what it looks like. So we can pick a iPad. Um, we can also change orientations. We can pick a, let's see, let's hit this again. We can change orientations. Um, let's see, we can do split screen, what it looks like. There's other iPhones in here that seem to have disappeared. But in other words, in this menu, we can go ahead and select different screen sizes and devices, and we can actually um, visually see in the storyboard here what our layout will look like with the current constraints we have, instead of running our application in every single simulator, which quite honestly is not an efficient use of time. So yeah, that, that's about it. That's an introduction to auto layout. Um, I would really encourage you to play with this because it's something that you get down once you use it more and more. Thank you so much for watching. If you found the video helpful, please leave a like below. It helps out the video and channel a lot. Uh, by all means, leave comments. I'd love to help you guys out as much as I can. I love hearing from you all. Subscribe if you're new. I do regular videos on Swift development, uh, iOS, other software engineering and technology in general. Uh, and yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.